Hello everybody and welcome to Keto Cooking with Cory. Today we're going to be making garlic Dijon pork chops with sautéed green beans that has mushrooms, roasted red peppers, and almonds in it. With that out of the way, let's begin the food! First up, I have six ounces of green beans. We're gonna wanna trim the stems off of all the green beans. Make sure none of the green beans are more than two inches long. Bear with me as I only grab a few at a time to cut them. All right, finally finished. So let's go ahead and throw those ends away and go on with the next event. Now I have four ounces of cremony mushrooms and I'm gonna go ahead and very gently and thoroughly wipe all of them off. You want to make sure to get any of the remaining dirt or anything else off of them that could be sticking to them. Once the mushrooms are clean, cut them into slices about 1 4th inches thick. They're so cute, they look like the little mushrooms you see in a pizza. I'm trying very, very hard to work on my knife skills right now, so work with me. I think I am actually getting better at it though. I hope you guys agree. Just a couple more mushrooms and little scrap -a doodles over there and we're gonna be done with that at least. Those tiny scrap pieces are pretty much good enough to stay as they are, so let's go ahead and clean that knife and get that in a bowl. There you go, mushrooms. Number three of our prep, we're going to roughly chop up a half ounce of almonds. No almond left unchopped. Almost got them all chopped up. Just a couple more. Yep, yep. There goes a couple fires. Gotta get them back in. Now 
little chop chop here and chop chop there. Yep. There we go. And then a chop chop on this side. Chop chop here and a chop chop over there. Okay. They have been chopped. Success. Now the last thing we have to prep is to mince one fourth ounce of fresh garlic. So I just went ahead and pushed a little force down on the garlics to make it a little bit softer and easier to cut through. Although it is still very sticky, so it's sticking to the knife and making it a little more difficult, but don't worry. We got this. So that piece is pretty much minced up, so let's go ahead and mince up its little brother. That sounded sad, actually. Sorry, little brother. Voila. Now I'm just going to go ahead and combine those two little piles so I can go ahead and go over it a little more with a quick choppy chop. Make sure everything is nice and minced. There's no big chunky parts of garlic. Although, if you would like bigger chunks of garlic in your meal, by all means, rock out. Garlic is delicious after all. And super flavorful for just one little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and finally chop up mine. That way all of the flavor gets soaked up into the meal. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead to our stove where I'm going to have a large saute pan over medium heat and I'm going to heat about one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. Stir the oil around in the pan so it all gets warmed up evenly and it is good to go. So first I'm going to add my green beans from earlier. And then the mushrooms. I'm going to go ahead and quickly stir that around a little bit so the oil can get on the green beans and the mushrooms. But before I really get into the stirring of it all, I'm going to go ahead and add a pinch of salt and pepper. Now I'm going to go ahead and stir it up again, making sure to try to flip the mushrooms as I go so each side gets a little bit cooked. Now flatten it out and let it cook for a little bit. You want to let it cook for about four to five minutes or until the green beans are fork tender. While it is all cooking, don't forget to occasionally come back every once in a while to stir it up.
Okay, my timer finally went off. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two and one fourth ounces of roasted red peppers. Along with the red peppers, I'm gonna go ahead and also add the almonds. Now we're gonna stir all those beautiful colors up together. Not forgetting to flip the mushrooms as we go. Again, we want both sides to sear a little bit, getting softer and softer each time. Yummy, it looks so colorful and delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that out and just let that cook for about two or three minutes. And it has been more than enough time. And by that I mean it's been three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir it all up again, get it all ready, and now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter. Now go ahead and mix that in, letting the heat melt it all up. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add salt and pepper, or as I just did, pepper and then salt. You know how I like to do it, folks. A little bit backwards. Now we're gonna let that butter melt on all of those nice delicious veggies that are all nice and tender and warm and just mix it all up. That looks perfect and it smells so yummy. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that up just a tiny bit more and then remove it from the heat. I just let it cool down for a minute and now that that minute is finally up, I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. Of course, doing my absolute best to evenly split it among the plates. The pan is really heavy, so it's really hard for me to get this food on the plate all nice and pretty like. But I am doing the best that I can do. Now back over on my stove, I'm going to heat about one tablespoon of olive oil in a medium saute pan over medium high heat. My pan is already nice and heated up, so I'm gonna go ahead and add two six ounce boneless pork chops. Now we're gonna let those porks cook three to four minutes on each side or until the pork is fully cooked. So my three and a half minutes is up, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this and check on the back of the pork. Perfect, looks yummy. Now to flip the other one so that side can cook for three to four minutes as well. And my timer is up. So let's go ahead and remove those from the heat. Now in the same pan that I used for the pork, I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic. Stir it up, mixing it all in with that pork juice and other delicious tasty things. 
and cook for about 30 seconds. That's all it takes because it's going to become extremely fragrant. That's how you know when it's really good and ready. Be sure to scrape up any browned bits in the bottom of the pan as you stir. Those unassuming specks are full of concentrated flavor and will add additional richness to your sauce. Now I'm just going to let that sit for a second or two, let it all get nice and crispy. Okay, let's stir that up really quick. That way the bottom of that garlic that's in the pan doesn't get burned. Perfect. So now I'm going to add a fourth cup of water. Stir it all around, mix all that flavor in the water. Make sure you stir the water, the delicious flavors, and the garlic all up thoroughly. That way it's all mixed together equally. Scraping the bottom of the pan as you go to make sure you get all of that flavor. Perfect! So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that out a little bit and let it cook for 2-3 to three minutes. Or until the liquid is slightly reduced. Okay, so it's been a minute and a half and I think I'm going to come in real quick and stir this up a little bit just to make sure none of it's being burned and all of it's being mixed and cooked evenly. Awesome. Okay, I think that's good. So now I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a little bit longer.
Okay, my timer finally went off. So now I'm gonna take that off the heat. Just slide it right over here and voila. Now in the pan with my still not finished sauce, I'm gonna go ahead and add one ounce of cream cheese. Squeeze every little bit and tidbit of delicious creaminess out. Yes, good enough. Next, I'm going to add one tablespoon of butter. Now, I have a little packet of a 1 4th ounce Dijon mustard, but I only want to use half of that in the sauce. And now for the finishing ingredient, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Now you want to stir everything together, making sure that butter gets nice and melted and the cream cheese as well. You kind of want to smush the cream cheese down a little bit, that way it makes it a little bit easier to mix. Boy, this is taking a, a lot of mixing, it seems. Just keep mixing, just keep mixing, mushing the cream cheese down as you go. Mixing it all up to a delicious sauce. Sorry, you guys had to hear that. That's just what the inside of my brain sounds like. It is finally starting to consolidate and look pretty creamy and saucy. Just a little more smashy over here, and a smashy over there, and then a stir this way. Yep, okay. And we're stirring that way now. All right. Ah, so much stirring. Okay, looks good. Anyways. Back over to my cutting board, which has my cooled off pork cutlets. Oh, look at the puppy. She can't have the pork though. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and cut the pork up into five to seven slices each. She really, really loves pork, but she really, really can't have it, which is really unfortunate for her. Her tummy sadly does not approve of pork, even though she does. Maybe one day they'll get along. Maybe one day. Okay, so there's the first pork. So let me just go slide that very carefully over to the corner. And now to cut up the second piece of pork. Mm, 
I'm sorry, baby. No pork for you. No pork for you. But yes, pork for me. Awesome. So let's go ahead and put the pork on our plates. I'm just going to go ahead and set that right next to all of those pretty little veggies that we made earlier. And here is the rest of the pork for the other plate. Now I'm going to take that delicious garlic Dijon sauce we made earlier and just very carefully attempt to spoon that on top of the pork. Okay, one spoonful at a time is taking too long. I'm hungry, so I'm just kind of, okay. Well, I want to be a little careful. Hmm. Just gotta, you gotta like, just plop that sauce down. Plop. Very gentle plop. Mm, there, it's not, it's like a plop. Don't know why I'm saying these weird words. Okay, let me go back over here and add just a little more of that saucy sauce. Just a smidge more. Okay, that looks good. And voila! That does actually look really, really good. And it smells great! Just look at how beautiful this looks. And not only that, it tasted really, really good. Once again, thumbs up. I feel kind of bad for always giving a thumbs up, but these meals are really, really good, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. The support means so much to me. If anybody has any good ideas or suggestions, or if you have something you want to see me make keto fight, let me know. I would love to try it out. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!